Hi guys, Kim here. Welcome to Backyard Blooms. In today's video, we are going to pick out some pansies and some violas for my concrete pots in my cottage garden. So I'm going to turn the camera around and come shop with me. So I'm at King's Greenhouse Nursery right now in Stallings, North Carolina. This place is about 40 minutes away from my house and I am in near Charlotte, North Carolina, zone eight. And look at all these beautiful pansies and violas. So this is my hardest decision is to decide which plants to choose from. Look how gorgeous these are. These right here are pansies. These will add a big pop of color if you have a lot of green. So these are a contender for me. When I came here, I was deciding whether to do orange this year because my neighbor planted a bunch of orange pansies last year. And I thought, oh my gosh, they looked so pretty all year round. But then after you get here, you're like, how can I decide? I like the rose color right there also. This caught my attention as well. There's so many pretty ones to choose from. I like the white right here because I feel like white looks really good in contrast against the green with that big little pop of yellow in the center there. We also have some trailing pansies right here that I've I have not tried any of these trailing ones in a long time. But these look really pretty. I feel like if you're putting in, putting in containers, the trailing ones would look really nice, kind of spilling over. And these yellow ones right here have really caught my eye right there. So I think I'm going to choose some of these yellow pansies right here. So I have three containers that I have in my cottage garden. As you all know, the three concre concrete containers. And right now they're filled with Vermillionaire and Super Bells, which they're probably about done and I need to switch over to fall. So I think for the big bright pop of color that I need, I'm gonna choose these yellow ones. So I'm gonna get a whole flat of these and I'll probably put at least two of those in each one, maybe even three. And then I'm gonna pair it with some other type of contrast. So this is what I have to choose from. So I don't wanna put the yellow with the yellow. This purple would be really pretty since it's got the yellow center in it. I always have loved this blue. I think the blue's really pretty. I did that one year. And of course, I told you I was gonna come for the, the orange, and the yellow and orange would be great choice. So I think what I'm gonna do, like I did last time at Pike's Nursery when Dawn was helping me film, is that I'm just gonna start in my cart right here with some different plants and then see what I end up with. And this is the one that I thought would be really pretty with the yellow. So this is what I'm gonna start with. I'm gonna put these trailing pansies and I'm gonna do three in each container, like I said. So I got enough of these yellow pansies, trailing pansies to put in each pot. Now I wanna decide like which color that I want to contrast it with. So these are, I've got four that I chose from. So I could either do this gorgeous one that contrasts really well and I thought about this one would be really pretty up against it too. But I have a lot of green in that area, so I need something that's going to pull away from the greens. White always does really pretty, and I think this one's really pretty too. That is simple and elegant with these two. And for some reason, I love this bloom. This bloom's different. It's like frilly and it looks like it has a double bloom on it. I'm really thinking that's gorgeous. And she, the girls told me that this has a bigger bloom on it and it's called Colosso White with a bigger bloom. I, I don't know. 
I like elegance and simple sometimes. After just doing a lot so much in the summertime. And I really do like this orange too. I don't know if I could pull off an orange in there as well. I think I might be able to. What do you guys think? Like the yellow and do an orange along with that color too. But just put pop it in on the other side. So I think I'm going to keep the orange and keep the white. I'm thinking I like that better than these two different purple colors for some reason. I feel like this screams more elegance in my design in my garden than these two. So, so originally I would have just picked this one. If I didn't like group my flowers here together, I would have just walked away with this one right here not not realizing that I may like something else better when I group things together so I think I'm going to go ahead and choose this and this one and then I'm going to pick out some of the other plants that I'm going to put in there we're going to look for some cabbage we're going to look for some mustard and kale with something with some height and then we're going to see what I eventually choose so let's go looking for some of those plants all right, so these are all the vegetable line. So I don't even know what some of this stuff is. Sometimes I get really surprised. This is a mustard, but just real green. And I'm not, I have a lot of green, so I'm not gonna choose anything like that. And let's see, this one is a Swiss chard maybe, but I do really like this red veining. That's really, really pretty. So if you chose like a rosy color, of pansy or viola that would be pretty right there and then I always like this I think this one right here is a this one's a cabbage I like the red cabbage and I like the purple in the middle so if I went purple that would be really really pretty and then this is the Ms. America that I've already planted in one of my pots and that is pretty as well so I'm gonna see what that looks like up against my plants and I don't know what this one is. This one's a kale right there. I like that option as well. And then this is just what they have inside and they have several outside too. This one's pretty. And then you could do other trailing stuff too. Like they have Ooh, this one's pretty. This is supposed to have some pink inside of it. Flowering kale. Of course, none of it's flowering right now, but that would be really pretty. And then you could always have some kind of accent. This is a Proven Winners Needlepoint Ivy. I've not seen this one. This is new to me. And let's see what else they have over here. This is another Proven Winners Glacier. And this is a helix, Hendra helix. So that would be pretty as well. I feel like I like this accent better than I do this darker green. And then you could do some spikes. I've already bought a couple of those spikes before. And then here's some more different trailing. I think this is more ivy. Yeah, this is an ivy, and I like the contrast on this ivy too. Look at that. And then to bring out some more of the yellow, this one's really pretty too. This is called Golden Ingot. It's an ivy. It's pretty. So let's pull, I'm going to pull one of these to see how that looks. All right, so these are some of the choices that I've just pulled out, and I'm going to compare what I would like with the combination that I feel like I already got going. So I have the yellow trailing pansies. I have this white with the yellow center and then I have this gorgeous orange. So the first thing that caught my eye was this and I thought this would pull together with these yellows but I think it clashes because I don't want to take away from this yellow. So for me I don't think this is a great choice compared to 
So I have this ivy right here, and I feel like this is too much green. Can you see? These are my three choices. This one, this one, or that one. And for me, this is too much green against this green. This has too much yellow to that, but I would choose this over this one. So we're gonna put this one back. Then it leaves me with this other one that I liked, which I feel like I like that the best because it gives me lots of contrast against this green right here. So it brings out like more of a silverishy and it's variegated. So I really like this combination right here. Let's see. And turn this little one around. I think it looks really pretty against with that pansy as well. And this leaf right here looks really pretty with that leaf. So like I said, I want different textures and different contrast here. So I think I'm gonna go with this one. And this one right here was the Proven Winners Glacier. Let's see, this one gets, it's dirty, let's see. This one is a trailing and it's grown for its foliage and it is it stays short, three to six inches. And it's hardy in zones five to nine. So I'm not sure if this will come back for us. It might. Annual except in zones five through nine. And sometimes it'll say that for us as well. But since I'm eight, sometimes I look out and it comes back for me. So we'll see if that plant will live throughout the winter for me. So we're going to put this one back. And I'm going to put the ones that I don't want down there. All right, so I think, and I had in mind, this is a mustard, and I didn't know that Ms. America was a mustard. I th always thought it was a kale. This one looks really, really pretty and gives me a great contrast with the yellow. It looks good against the orange. It looks really pretty against this white and against this ivy. So there's some bigger ones outside, so I'm gonna grab the bigger ones outside they're a bigger container as well, since I have a larger container. So we're going to go with that mustard. And then I also had a couple of other options too that I just wanted to show you. So this was a pretty contender as well. But I feel like it's too much green still. Like this pops out more to me. But if I was doing all purple pansies, this would be really, really pretty with the purple. Just to kind of give you an idea, that is really pretty together. It would look really good against that rose color too. So it would look good against this purple too. Just to kind of give you a different container idea, that would be pretty. And then I also liked this kale here with the pink, but that's not doing it for me with this going on right here not really loving that. So we're gonna put that back. We're gonna put all of these back, but that would be a pretty container right there. Just that with either one of these would be really, really pretty if you wanted the purples. So, and then I wanted to throw a cabbage in there, some type of cabbage. So these are the two choices that I have. This one is the Coral Queen. So let's see what this looks like up against. Now see, that is a different green. I think that really looks really pretty with these colors. And it plays off this really pretty too against that ivy. So I like this one, so I could do that. And then the other one is a little bit more green. Let's see. Let's put this up here together with all of these. So I feel like that that's too much green. You see, compared to that one, this one contrasts really better with all this other that I have going on. So I think I'm gonna put this one back. But this would be really pretty with that rose color or any kind of, if you're just doing this, that's really pretty as well. So we're gonna put that one back see so what do I have here so this is what I've got going on right now 
I've got one cabbage, one mustard. I have something that's trailing. Of course, these are gonna trail also. And then I have this white. So I think I really like that combination together so far. They have some other stuff outside, but we're gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and pick up maybe six of these. And then I'm gonna plant at least two or three of these in with these uh, trailing pansies. And then I'll grab one of these for each pot and one of these for each pot. And then we're gonna put that right there back. And then I'll just stroll around the nursery to see what else we might like. But that's what I got going on right now. They have a great choice of snapdragons as well. And you could do snapdragons in your containers too. Just to kind of give you an idea. I don't know what color, if I was gonna put a snapdragon in like this yellow would probably look good. Let's see. Let's see what this yellow snapdragon would look like. You can see, so I don't know. I don't not dig in that yellow with these colors, but just to kind of give you an idea, and the snapdragons would give you some height too. So actually, if I was gonna do a snapdragon with this container, I would do the white right there. But for some reason, I just felt like my snapdragons weren't looking gorgeous until I was ready to pull them up last year. But anyways, yeah, that, that white one would look really, really pretty. I could probably put one snapdragon in each container. You could also bunch them up together and do three. Three of the snapdragons along with these others. That would be pretty too. And that would give you some fullness in the container instead of just one, one small stalk. So actually I really like that look. So I'm going to put two snapdragons in the center of the container with the surrounding. So as you can see, if you do the thr thriller, filler, spiller method, this is gonna be my thriller. These are gonna be my fillers. This can be a spiller and then that will be my spiller as well. And this will go for both. So you can see some of the containers that they've already done as well with the pansies, snapdragons, and then that big spike that I've already done before in some of the gardens that I've already planted. I put this in Bonnie's um, center of her uh, hanging baskets. And then I just wanted to tell you, like I love pumpkins too, and I love the ones that look like these as well. I like to stack them, like if you stack this one up against this one and then even a white one too. That would be really pretty. I like the stackable ones. That white right there. Some of these look a little bit crazy. Look at that one. And this is what some of the kale looks like with some of the violas right there. Last year I did the three stacking pumpkins and I put them right in the middle, but that's before I had my Japanese maple in the middle. This one would be a good stacking pumpkin right there. Not really crazy about that yellow, but that with a white one. So this is so something that I would do. The white with the I guess bluish green with the orange one on top. You would have to cut this though, of course. They would stack really nice. I'm loving these mums with these like terracotta pots that look really nice more than just the regular black container. So I think I'm gonna grab me a mum or two and then I'm gonna show you a trick to extending the life of these mums as well so they don't dry out for you. It's a really good trick. Like I said, I'm at King's Nursery 
and it's right outside of Charlotte. We're in Stallings, North Carolina. And this is one of my go-to nurseries as well. They have lots of proven winter plants here. So I can always come here and grab shrubs, annuals, perennials. As you can see, there's a good selection of shrubs over there. And then over here, you can see that they have lots of uh, proven winter perennials, hookahs, lots of different varieties of stuff. And they have great pots here too. The two that I had in the very front, those uh, are kind of like an off-white color. That's where I got these at. So I really like this white. However, I think I'm gonna go with one of these yellow ones. And when I'm picking out one, I don't want one that's already in complete full bloom because I want to extend the life of it a little bit. So you can see that this one's already in full bloom right there and doesn't have very many buds on it. But this one right here is about half and half. So I think I'm gonna go with something like this one or even this one up here. So I'm in the outside area and this is where they had a little bit bigger of the Ms. Americas right here. You can see the container size is a tad bit bigger. So I'm gonna put one of these Ms. Americas in each container. So there's a good selection right there. And then let me pan around here and show you these right here look really good too. So if you're doing a really big pot, you can also throw some perennials in there. This would be really pretty in a perennial in the fall garden too. And so with these right here, they would be really pretty. Kind of looks like a Rebecca, but I've never heard of this one before. I'm even scared to say the name. Ecky Becky, Etchy Becky, I don't know. Anyways, that's a pretty option. And then you could also put some of the sedums in there. This one is the uh, pure, Rockin' and Round Pure Joy. Those are pretty options. And then you could, you can always add some of the coral bells in there too. Like this is a great fall color right there. That would be gorgeous with some of the white with the purple in the middle. Pansies or violas, that would be a pretty option. Actually, this would be gorgeous against the orange that I have. That would be really, really pretty. And I think this would probably be pretty in there too. I might put this up against my plants to see how pretty that is, actually. And let's see what else we have over here. And this is the um, Primo Black Pearl. This one would be really pretty. This is a pretty option, or what this one is. see this one's called zipper this color that is really really pretty and that's a hookra and then some of these limey ones would be pretty as well if you need to add a pop of brightness that will bring brightness any of these would be really pretty forever red and this is called caramel coral bell that would be pretty any of these options would be gorgeous in a fall container here. These ferns would be a great option in there as well. I think this is the exact same one that I bought at Pike's Nursery that was Proven Winners. Pretty sure it was Crested Surf. That would be pretty. And then this one's really pretty too. The Ghost Fern. There's, they've got lots of different ferns here, as you can see. So I just bought this one hookah over here. This is called Georgia Peach to see what it would look like in my container. I'm not sure, I think it takes away from the orange. I think it might be too red. 
So that's why you want to place your plants up next to each other because you might think something will look really good until you get it up next to each other. And then I think it'll probably take away from this kale too, or this mustard, Ms. America. I actually went with the smaller Ms. Americas because the other were, I don't think my containers could handle all of this. So we're gonna put this back. So I'm pretty happy with my combination of plants that I picked out today for my containers in the cottage garden. So we're gonna get all checked out and then after I get the containers all cleaned up and filled with soil, then we'll get back together with you and see how these gorgeous containers turn out. I'll see you at home, bye. So I'm back at home from the nursery and I'm gonna do this one container the exact same way as the other three because I like all three containers looking the exact same since they're all consecutive here in this cottage garden. So it took me a little while to um, get all the plants out. So it's, what I did was I cut everything back with my Felco pruners, cut everything back, did, 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 and then I used my Hori Hori knife to cut everything out. So it, it took a little bit of time, I'm not gonna lie, because these plants have been in here all spring and summer long, and they were really rooted in. So I had to really use some muscle to get it all out. But just a little bit at a time, I cut, 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 and then got it all out. So just kind of started on the side and worked my way around and then towards the middle as well. If you have um, a handyman at home and he can just dump this container over and pull it all out in one piece, more to him. My husband's at work today and I really wanted to get some of this done today while I'm at home. So I went ahead and did it myself. So anyways, that's how I got it out and then if you um, really wanna know after this video, after it ends, I'll go ahead and show you at the very end how I cut it out so you don't have to watch the whole entire thing. So I've got it clean, and then you can see that I have my drip here. So I'm gonna just move my wire over a little bit so I don't cover the wire up with drip. We're gonna get this container filled with my Proven Winter soil. This is an all-purpose potting soil, and I like it the best because it really does drain really well and it's got a slow release fertilizer for these plants to be able to fertilize as well. I may supplement it with the uh, water soluble fertilizer too while it's still warm so I can get these roots start to grow before it starts to get cool. So I'm just gonna use my Hori Hori knife and I'm gonna pop this open. how much, if it'll take this whole bag or not, but we'll see. I don't think so. I'm gonna fill it pretty full to the rim, and then that way if I need to just dip some off to the side, I can do that. My hair's in my way, my face, I might go and tie my hair up. I got my hair done this morning, and that's why I was on that side of King's um, nursery so that's why I popped into that nursery. I normally wouldn't go to that side of town. We used to live there and that's how I knew about King's Nursery and they also had a Proven Winners garden some kind of display at the fairgrounds and that's how I knew about King's too. So I was super happy that I found more than one places that carry nothing but Proven Winners. So what I like to do in my container sometimes I'll just go ahead and pop my plants in the way that I think I might like them. So I can put two of these snapdragons right here. And I know that I'm going to use a kale. This is the Ms. America kale. So I'll probably put it more on the side here. And then we have a cabbage that I'm gonna put in as well. So I kinda like to put these plants like more on the side. Let's see, especially this kale, this uh, cabbage on the side. And then I have two of these that I'm gonna put in and they'll definitely go on the side. Let's see. Maybe something like that. And I bought three of these each pansies to uh, put in each container. And I like a full, these to be fuller. So what I'm gonna do is use all three of these as one plant. Sometimes you could find a bigger container and I have three plants in it anyways, and that's what I'm gonna do. And I don't have to use all the dirt that are in this container, but I'm gonna plant all three of these in one spot. So, I'm gonna have more containers. 
space than I am dirt here. So let's see. Might put this bright orange here in the middle. And these are just a little bit droopy because I did go ahead and water them in. Some of them were pretty dry when I got them home. And that's one thing that I never want to do. I never want to put a dry plant in the soil. You, that just gives it a bad start. So let's see. I kind of want my pansies to really shine. So I may put one there. This is going to be definitely hanging over. I might put these more towards the back. Of course, they're gonna, this is going to be like one plant right there. And then I bought two of the trailing also. So these are gonna trail. These can either trail or spill. I think these right here will be more upright. And then this one right here all trail, if that makes any sense. And then I could put another one of these back over here. Also, I can bring my cabbage over just a little bit more this way. And this is going to trail, and I can put this right behind it. Something, something like that is what I kind of had in my mind. So I like to go ahead and display my plants as like kind of as I picture. Sometimes if I don't like step back and look at it, I don't really like it, I, I would change it. I think I'm okay with that. I've got this pop of orange, this white over here, and then of course you can see lots of yellow. This is gonna be more of a trailing after I get this in. I'm pretty happy with that. So yeah, I'm going to uh, go find a hair tie and get this hair out of my eyes, and then we'll get these out of the container and into the soil and I'll show you guys what it looks like at the very end. flowers in and then I just make sure that all the roots are covered got it pretty dense right in here I probably could have scooted over some just a little bit but I think they'll find so once I kind of give them a little bit of fertilizer of the uh, continuous release fertilizer the water soluble fertilizer they'll with the weather temperature still being in the 70s and close to 80s they're gonna like root in there really really well so they're kind of sad looking right now because I just watered them right before I planted them. I don't know what's going on with this. I feel like this is loose somehow. Anyways, we'll figure it out in just a little bit. But I'm going to go ahead and water this in really good. And I'm going to soak it really, really well the first time because I put the soil in dry too. Some people will put some soil in and then wet it down 
and then put some more soil in and wet it down, especially like the very first time. Now I'm not really worried about this drip and I think I'm just gonna let it hang back there or I may just disconnect it, but I'm not gonna have my drip on in the winter time anyway. So I'm just gonna water it by hand and we get a good amount of rain in the winter time anyways. And I'm not gonna have the drip on all winter long. Actually we can't because we do still get some cold nights where we don't want any of the drip at all near the faucet. Well, these aren't gonna look pretty until the sun hits them tomorrow and then they're gonna perk back up. So we're gonna come back tomorrow and I'm gonna show you again like how pretty they are. I kind of like it when this uh, mustard was really big, but I got a lot, a lot of still, you know, growing season for it to be in this pot, so it'll fill in nicely. A lot of people would be like, "Well, why didn't you put a tall grass in there?" I have a lot of height here with these uh, Yoshio cryptomera trees, so it's not something that I feel like I need a lot of height. Y'all, I love this. It looks like fall. It looks like spring. It's a couple of days later. I love how the sun is just hitting the corner of this container right here. So I thought it was a perfect time to come out and share what it looks like. All the plants are nice and perky and not droopy from being watered in. They've watered in and they're super happy in their new place, their new home. I'm loving this ivy against this concrete container. I think it's so pretty. The yellow violas that are going to droop over are just beaming in the sun. This new wandering Jew I just added, my friend neighbor gifted that to me. She said she just took a cutting off of it and you put it in, no, no root stimulator or anything. It just roots in, so we're going to try that. I think it adds a lot of pretty interest along with this other mustard that I have on the other side. I do love orange. And the yellow and the orange plays off really pretty together. And then the white just brings that brightness that I need in this garden. And the snapdragons are all bloomed out. So this is what all three containers are looking like. These containers are in my cottage garden in the very front. They're all very similar, same plants. the Beyond Pink Coreopsis that we planted earlier. This is container number two. And container number three. Before I go, I would like to ask you to please like, share, and subscribe. Right now, I have 93% of the people that watch my videos that have not subscribed and it's free to subscribe. It just helps me with my YouTube logarithm and sometimes YouTube will push my videos out when I have more likes and subscribes. So I'd like to ask you to do me that favor and please subscribe to me. And I hope you like my videos and I hope that I'm an inspiration to you and I hope that you get out and garden. You know, guys, it is fall, y'all. I like saying that. I think it's a cute little saying. And it's a great time to get out and put in your pansies and put in your violas and all that kale and cabbage is really cute in these containers. So I'll see you in the next video. Bye friends.
Uh, so that's how I do it. Some people might do it different. If these containers were not concrete and so heavy, I, was, I would be able to dump them over onto the ground and be able to use my force this way to get some of that out, but they're too heavy for me. Once I, I could probably lay it down on the ground, but I may not be able to lay it back up and get it onto these uh, concrete little pieces right here that I have it to raise it up. It'd be in my attention, my intention would be to get some real pretty higher, uh, we call it bases or something like that, that like Unique Stone has for them to raise them up higher and they're really pretty, but they're quite expensive. And this was just a really good option. I just bought these at Home Depot and I've got three of them. One's buried into the ground to make it like even and to where these won't like dip over quite a bit. So anyways, that's just an option and a cheaper way if you would like to do that for your containers. But I think it's really prettier and nicer if you can get like a real pretty concrete stand for them. Maybe in the future I'll be able to have money for that. But anyways, I hope this helps. If you did not realize how to cut it out with the hori hori knife, I hope it helped. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye friends.